Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to Randomly Relaxing. Um, I have just enough time to do a short video, and uh, today I wanted to talk about um, coronavirus and the uh, Omicron, or Omicron, depending on where you are, um, variant that has been in the news lately. There's quite a few things in the news lately, actually. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about if I wanted to talk about current events. But uh, I thought some of you might... Um, I just have water today. Um, some of you might want to sit back and relax and uh, learn a little bit more about what's going on with this uh, Omicron variant. Um, as, as with all COVID-19 related news, it seems like there's lots of folks who, um, you know, are quick to jump to some sort of conclusion about something <laughs> um, when there's a, a a new, you know, development, and uh, this is no exception to that rule. Um, you know, uh, the first news of this um, virus, I want to do a little search here. Um, I'll bring you over to my computer here. So the first news of this uh, variant, this uh, Omicron, uh, by the way, uh, the first thing I thought I'd, I'd mention is the pronunciation of this because I, I, I had to think about that a little bit and uh, my first guess was that it was pronounced Omicron. And uh, when I started listening to news stories about it, people were saying Omicron. Um, and, it, and in fact, uh, Omicron is the preferred or, I guess, uh, predominant pronunciation in the United States, and Omicron is the preferred uh, pronunciation in uh, in Britain. And so, it depends on where you are, I guess. But in any event, um, this, this is the um, infection um, chart for South Africa, and um, you see they've had now they're on their fourth kind of wave. First one was, you know, back in uh, spring of 2020, um, you know, when everything was just getting cooking. Then there was that sort of second wave that happened in the winter of um, 2020 into the spring of 2021. And then this right here is the Delta variant um, kind of coming into um, the predominant being the becoming the predominant strain and uh, you know it's by far the biggest uh, wave and then and so in between each of these waves South Africa you know had um, pretty pretty low counts you know for an entire country you know about 1500 cases in these swells and and actually after the Delta they really really went down to almost nothing like a hundred 200 cases for a whole country um, which is pretty crazy, and uh, then all of a sudden, look at this little, this blue line right here, I don't know if you can see that, I'll take my cursor away, but that blue line um, is basically, you know, the uh, Omicron uh, effect, and it went from, you know, 312 cases the day before to all of a sudden um, 2,000 plus cases, 24, 66 cases, and uh, I don't know if that was like maybe on a Monday or something. A lot of times they don't report on weekends, and then Monday is like a big day, um, so it was like particularly big there because like you know the next days it's sort of um, not as high. Actually, I feel like I'm not getting that number. Is 24, 65 that number? No, I don't think it is. Well, in any event, there's a big spike there, you know, and then it's sort of down, but it's like there's another wave kind of building here. So anyways, uh, what happened was, and if you've been reading about this, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff you already know. So I'm kind of looking to inform people that, you know, don't haven't really been following too closely and want to just know what's going on. But in any event, so in South Africa, you know, kind of in um, the end of November, they noticed this big spike. And in South Af Africa, they've uh, been monitoring um, like the genetic sequences of 
the variants of you know the um, the instances of the virus that they've been finding and testing and so they've been closely seeing you know what um, variants have been predominant there and identifying when there are new variants and so that's why they were sort of on the leading edge of detecting um, this virus or this variant they, they saw a spike and then they you know they realized that it was a variant that um, a new variant that was responsible primarily for that spike and so you know they did some other scientists did some investigation and then they named the variant and um, you know the variant has a bunch of mutations that uh, have not been seen before in strains that have caused like significant increases uh, the thing to understand about the coronavirus is that you know there's tons of mutations out there I mean it's almost like every time it infects a person it seems like there's like some minor mutation whether that mutation like sort of gain steam and um, you know becomes a major player in the um, ecosystem you know depends on how well that mutation um, allows it to spread and so um, the Omicron uh, variant you know has mutation a combination of mutations that do seem to allow it to spread very easily um, and so there's been lots of lots of news um, about the Omicron variant very quickly. Yeah, I think a lot of um, news outlets, you know, have sort of jumped on this <laughs> development as, uh, you know, very bad or potentially very bad news, which, you know, it could be, but, um, you know, any variant could be very bad news. I think, you know, people are sort of primed to panic a little bit, or at least the news is kind of primed to panic a little bit because, uh, you know, sells newspaper. I mean, if you, if you think some crisis has happened, if you think an alien invasion isn't happening, you're going to watch the news. Um, so there is a, there, there is a bias, I think in the news for sensationalism that has always existed. Um, and it's why I think, you know, the Kardashians get any coverage at all because they have such a train wreck of a situation a lot of times with their you know, I, 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 I guess that's kind of mean. I, 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 but I have to say, I first started noticing how like crazy news was back when the Kardashians became like a thing and they were in the news and like, it would be on the front page of, you know, CNN's website, CNN's website, you know, whatever, like Kim Kardashian's got a new boyfriend or something. I'm like, why, why is this on the front page of the news? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, but you know, it's because that's what, I don't know, it was sensational at the time and people kind of eat that up. So anyways, a lot of people, I think, react um, negatively when, you know, something is in the news a ton all of a sudden, as is the case with Omicron. And they, I see a lot of people saying, you know, oh, there's a conspiracy to make everybody panic. And, you know, there's there's some deep state conspiracy to control people somehow during, uh, you know, in that. And, you know, uh, my my response to that is similar to my response to a lot of things when people say, you know, there's this conspiracy. And it's like, it's not really a conspiracy. It's it's pretty it's pretty out there that the media is trying to sell impressions on their website and, you know, subscriptions to their uh, papers or to their, um, you know, paywalls. Um, I mean, is human uh, desire for profit and greed a secret that is really some sort of hidden conspiracy, or is it the most obvious thing in the world? Uh, I think it's the latter, and I think a lot of conspiracy theories out there um, are sort of, you know, um, they are sort of Pollyannish or uh, very um, naive to think that there has to be some like nefarious backroom kind of um, plotting for uh, you know particular news coverage or whatever it's like pretty obvious what's going on it's like you know like take politics if I can try not to dive you know too deep into a rabbit hole here but you know, like, is it a secret that politicians are, you know, 
out to sort of save their own behinds a lot of the time. Not all the time, but certainly a lot of the time. And they're trying to get reelected and they're trying to get money so they can have campaigns to get them reelected and they want to not go away, you know, before they're ready. I mean, that's uh, pretty obvious. Um, and we should understand that when we think about, you know, politicians uh, in general. I don't think we need to sort of believe that all politicians are in the back room, uh, you know, plotting, you know, the uh, destruction of, of mankind. I think they're plotting their own, like, political survival and uh, in a lot of ways, you know, maintaining their power because it keeps them employed. Anyways, I'll talk more about that maybe in future videos, but, um, you know, I don't think the news coverage of Omicron is, is uh, any nefarious plan to control people. I think it's, uh, well, it, it is in the sense that what they want to do is have you consume more of their content. And that's always been, you know, their motive. Uh, I hope that they can, a lot of the time, you know, make that motive um, stand behind the motive of reporting information that's useful and helpful to the people who are reading it. But, you know, they can't do it all the time, and their bias shows, for sure. Anyways, so the Omicron uh, variant is out there. That story I actually just uh, clicked over on is the... Um, story from just this afternoon here, and I'm going to post this the same day I'm recording it. It's Wednesday, December 1st. Happy December, everybody. Um, I can tell I'm getting too worked up. I'm talking too fast. You're probably not being relaxed. I apologize. Let's relax. Very good. Um, so what, what what is there to know about Omicron? Uh, it does appear to be very um, easily spread. Um, as evidenced by that kind of spike you saw in South Africa. And also, I think they're starting to see that in other places. I think, like, um, parts of EU that have gotten this virus show up there um, have had similar experiences. Um, so we know that about it, or it seems like that's probably going to prove to be true. The two other questions that are very important with the new variant are what is the virus's ability to make people sick? Um, and then the third question is, what is the ability of the virus to evade vaccines or um, some of the drugs that have been used to combat um, the virus once people are infected? The answer um, to the uh, um, second question, how sick does it make people, is, is a big question that is unknown. And that, you know, scientists are working very actively to try and figure out. So what they're going to do is, you know, test as many people as they can in a particular location for um, to determine what variant of COVID-19 they were infected with if they come in for testing. And then they're going to do, um, you know, studies on what uh, symptoms they had and what percentage, you know, showed up um, or presented symptoms that required hospitalization and what uh, percentage um, died. And so, you know, we, we have very little information. I mean, just sort of like anecdotal information. The doctor that um, discovered this variant in South Africa um, has um, given quite a few interviews now. And, you know, basically what she has said is the patients that she's seen and that she knows had this Omicron variant um, infect them had symptoms that are a bit different than other um, variants of coronavirus. For example, the um, loss of taste and smell seems to not be have been present in those small case number of cases that she has observed. Um, the other thing that she has said about, again, small sample size, so you really can't take too much from it. Although I will say it is good news. So, you know, let's hope it continues to be, you know, true of larger populations of people that get infected with Omicron. But um, the, uh, the other thing she said is that the symptoms that have presented um, in these Omicron cases have been very mild. Um, you know, kind of runny nose, um, you sort of feel a little bit lethargic, but not, uh, not anything like what we 
have seen with Delta variant or with some of the other earlier variants of coronavirus. So again, that's, you know, very anecdotal, um, very early. Um, but if, you know, if that small sample size tends to, or tr proves to be indicative of, lar of what we see in larger sample sizes, that's going to be very good news because, you know, you've got a variant that seems like it's going to, cr it's going to be very successful in terms of crowding out the other variants like Delta. Um, but it will be very, um, minimally harmful to those that get it. So it will create a lot of people that are going to have immunity and it will do that without, um, you know, causing permanent damage or, or killing them. Um, the other thing, the third thing is, um, you know, how, how the, the, um, vaccines are going to, uh, work against this Omicron variant. And, and that's another thing where it's like, they just don't have great data. Um, and that's what scientists are going to be working on for the next two to three weeks very intensively. Um, but I have seen, um, some news reporting, take a drink here. And I have just a couple minutes left. I apologize for the short video today, but it's uh, it's kind of a crammed day. But um, there has been some reporting on the experience of Israel, which has a relatively high vaccination rate. They at one time were way above, way, way ahead of many other countries in terms of vaccination, but um, that sort of fell off at some point. And I think they ended up kind of having about 65% of the population vaccinated, which, you know, as a country is pretty good, but like some, um, states in the U S have surpassed that in some, you know, your other areas, uh, maybe like cities in, in Europe have, have surpassed that as well. So they're not like, you know, this bastion of, um, super high vaccination numbers, but in any event, I have seen only very like summary comments from like the health officials in, Israel saying that the, the, what they see is um, that the vaccines and it's a lot of Pfizer vaccine in um, Israel um, has been effective that they are not seeing really any um, you know major impacts of this Omicron on uh, vaccinated people in, in you know in their country now I haven't seen any sort of like numbers or any sort of even anecdotal studies that have been um, put out there by the officials in Israel. So, you know, that's just kind of taking their word on it. Um, so, yeah, so we don't know a whole lot. Um, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, when studies start to come out. And I think, you know, they will in the next two to three weeks. Um, I think you're going to be seeing more Omicron cases in the United States. It's already in Canada, even before it showed up in California. So it very well may be that it's quite widespread in the United States already. Um, I see, you know, places like Michigan and Minnesota have had some really crazy spikes recently. And I don't know if they would have even tested for Omicron because like if they didn't know it existed, I mean, I guess they can see you know, genetic variants, um, with, before they have names, right? So they can spot, you know, whether there's a trend of variant of a particular variant showing up in those cases. But I, I, I kind of wonder if, you know, Omicron has already been, um, you know, hanging out in some cities or states in, in the United States, but we, we will find out more as with everything. And, uh, you know, silver lining is, I think, it certainly could be that this turns out to be a variant that is um, quite helpful to the um, subjugation of the of the virus, um, you know, by the natural defenses um, of our immune system. Because if it is something that uh, triggers our immunity with relatively little or no risk of long-term health effects or or dying, you know, that's a that's a that's a really good thing. So. Um, if it's also, if it's, you know, if it's, uh, not going to be evade, not going to be able to evade the vaccines, that's also a very good thing. And a lot of, um, countries are, you know, saying, let's get, let's get lots of people vaccinated right now, because if this turns out to be a bad variant, 
you know, it's not going to get nearly as far if more people are vaccinated. So, um, anyways, that's that's kind of what I know about the Omicron variant. Um, I hope that was somewhat useful to folks. Uh, I might post some links to um, like some some uh, articles or some uh, like YouTube videos that I've seen from doctors um, who who have posted you know kind of informational videos. If if you want to learn more or you think I'm an idiot and uh, you want to take it kind of from an expert, I, I absolutely support you in that. I am not a doctor. <laughs> I don't even play one on the, on TV. Um, but, uh, you know, I have been reading about it and thought it would be good to sort of, sort of report that in a way that hopefully is a little bit relaxing for folks. All right, folks, that's all I got for today. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out uh, my other channel, ASMR Sports, if you're not already subscribed. And if you do like sports-related content, lots of fun stuff going on there. And uh, posts are coming every other day over there as well as here. So have a great one. Uh, stay uh, Stay relaxed out there. See you all next time.